Ever since I've been young, I've loved knowing how things work. So whenever I learned how to drive stick, I wanted to know the difference between how a manual transmission with a clutch works and how automatic transmissions work with torque converters. And I wanted to know the differences between them, which one was better, which one was worse and why, which one, why the better one was better and why the one that was inferior was inferior. So when someone says to me, you should build Rass boys in the late game. I want to know why or why not that might be true. So today we're going to be looking at mass fabs versus brass commanders, which one is better in the late game. And I think that these findings will surprise you guys. So we're gonna be hitting three topics. First off, overall cost, how efficient your return on investment is, and why you should go for one over the other. Kind of our typical science video formula here. So let's get into some stats. First off, if we're comparing the mass cost of a Tech 3 mass fab versus a RASCOM, the direct comparison isn't gonna work there. So a Tech 3 mass fab has a very large energy cost associated with them to operate. So if we're going to be evaluating the overall cost, we need to take into account the power that it is costing to actually run the mass fabrication unit. So that being said, you need roughly 60% of a Tech 3 power generator to operate a mass fab. This brings our mass total cost for a single mass fabrication unit to 5,944 mass total investment up front. A RASCOM is a little bit more straightforward. The cost of a RASCOM does vary slightly between the different factions, but not by much. And in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to impact our numbers that much. The range is about 150 mass. So I'm going to call that a negligible difference on total investment. But we're going to be looking at the UEF, which is 6,600 total mass. The range, if you're curious, is on the cheaper side. You've got 6,450 for the Cybran, 6,500 for the Aeon, 6,600 for the UEF. So there's not a whole lot of variance there. Seraphim, of course, being the one faction without RAS commanders available to them. Now, the mass fab will give you 16 mass per second and the RASCOM will give you 11 mass per second. So those are gonna be the numbers that we're gonna be using whenever we actually start calculating the efficiency of our return on investment. The best way to calculate this is to measure how much mass we put in divided by the mass that we're getting back. This shows us how much mass we have invested per point of mass generated. Now I've set up nice round numbers here for everything. So we're gonna be comparing a couple of different setups here. The first is gonna be three Tech 3 power generators with five mass fabs so that the energy drawn is equivalent to the energy that is being generated from the Tech 3 power generators. We're also going to be looking at six RAS commanders and we do have a surprise contender in a second, but first off, we'll just look at these two straight up. Now our mass invested per mass generated for the mass fabs is 371.5, which is already really expensive whenever we compare it with normal mexes, which sit in the 200s for a Tech 3 mat, for a Tech 3 mex. Now this means that in order to get one point of mass out of our system, we are investing 371 0.5 points of mass into the system to get one point of mass return. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Now flipping it, the RASCOMs here are looking way worse at 600 mass invested per mass point of mass generation, which makes this really, really rough. So if we take 6,600 mass that it costs to build a RASCOM, divide it by the 11 mass per second that it generates, we get 600 mass. Now that is a, that is way higher uh, almost 50, more than 50% higher uh, of an investment than uh, going for mass fabrication unit or going for mass fabrication units with Tech 3 power generators. And honestly, it gets even worse here. Um, and most people, myself included, will use RASCOMs as kind of static units and as engineers. So they really just invest in them as the for eco. They just crank out as many RASCOMs as you can and you have more eco but this is literally the least efficient way to increase your economy in the late game is just building RAS commanders uh, straight up with no caveats here. The least efficient way that you can increase your mass later in the game. 
Now, as I said earlier, we do have another contender. And a lot of you are screaming at your screen right now, potentially jackhammering your keyboard down in the comments below, screaming at me that the Rascom generates power as well. And you're right. So let's build six RAS commanders. Let's build it with, and let's pair it with four mass fabrication units. So that uses the 6,000-ish power generated by the RASCOMs and we'll run the numbers once again. Now this helps quite a bit, but it still brings our ratio down to 427 mass invested per mass generated. So again, if we're comparing numbers here, 371 for just straight up mass fabrication units, 600 if we're just using RASCOMs and evaluating them only on their mass generated, and 427 invested if you're pairing a RASCOM, RASCOMs with Tech 3 mass fabrication units. Now this is still less efficient than just going for T3 mass fabs and power generators. So as far as late game efficiency, if you're like me, you crank out as many RASCOMs as you can and then just call it a day, then you are literally generating the least efficient eco that you possibly can. In order to make RASCOMs even semi-competitive, you need, to, you need to be able to pair them with uh, Tech 3 mass fabricators in order to use the power that is actually coming out of the RAS commander. One of the least efficient ways that you can actually increase your eco later on in the game. So why do we build them then? Why in almost every single game in the late game do we see RAS commanders being utilized and why do we not see Tech 3 mass fabricators? So let's answer the first one first. Why do we see RAS commanders? Now, we see RAS commanders because they are mobile. So it's a, it's a mobile economy that you can move around. They do also have build power as well, which is a huge asset for them. And they do have some limited combat ability. So they do, do bring some other things to the table. In these tests, I've analyzed them primarily through a single lens, and that's eco efficiency. Now I would propose that this is a fair assessment since that is a RAS commander's primary purpose is to generate resources. If you're looking to get more build power, there's engineer presets or there's kennels. Uh, if you're looking to get more combat oriented units, you should be building tech three bots or Rambo commanders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's usually a better option if you're looking for a more specialized role, but that more specialized role doesn't 100% exist for the resource allocation system. This is the best that you can get as far as mass efficiency through support commanders and the efficiency sucks. Now, their significant advantage that I talked about a little bit earlier is that they are mobile. So if your base is getting torn apart and you evac your RASCOMs, you can still escape with a pretty good chunk of your economy intact and be able to be, be able to rebuild at a different location. Let's say that you've got 10 RASCOMs available. That's roughly 10,000 energy coming in per second that the rest of your team can use because there's no way you're going to be able to use that with your mass income but it also is 110 mass that is being generated per second as well that is not an insignificant amount of eco and can allow you to rebuild move your base much easier than it would if you just had tech 3 mass fabs so let's answer the second question why don't people build tech 3 mass fabs and i think that there's kind of two there's two primary reasons for this Number one, I think there is a stigma around mass fabrication units, and it's that they're bad. And I think we've proven here that they're not bad. They're actually really, really good uh, if they're used correctly and paired with the appropriate amount of power. Now, the second reason that you might not use these is space. Uh, in a lot of maps that you'll play, you have a limited amount of build space. And a lot of the time that is taken up by factories, it's taken up by power generators, and it's easier to fit RAS commanders in just from a pure space perspective. But at the end of the day, if you're an investor, building RAS commanders is not a great investment in straight mass efficiency. They come with their own advantages, but if you're looking to get the most mass returned on your investment, you should definitely be going for mass fabricators in the late game. So long as you have space and as long as you're okay with your economy not being mobile, that's gonna be the best way to continue to advance your economy after you've uh, completely maxed out all of your mexes and capped them, et cetera. It's gonna be building T3 mass fabs, pairing them with power generators, maybe throwing some RAS commanders in there as well, just for a little bit of redundancy, but 
shouldn't leave attack three mass fabricators out of the equation entirely okay guys that's going to be it for me today hope you guys found this interesting i was actually really surprised with these results i was expecting rascoms to really kind of just chew up the mass fabs and spit them out but the mass fabs actually do have a pretty compelling reason as to why you should build them and um, i'd like to see them a little bit more i rarely see them in casts like almost never if yeah i literally never see tech 3 mass fabricators i don't build them i don't think anybody really builds them Pretty much everybody just goes straight from T3 Mexes to RAS boys, and they don't really build Tech 3 mass fabricators. So this is something I hope that is food for thought for you guys, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.